Hello YouTube, my name is Alan Samsel and this is my channel, Alan's Cloud. Today I'm going to talk to you about a process that I had to go through this morning to uh, try to update my R710 Dell PowerEdge firmware. I was running on the uh, 640 and there's a new one out there, 650, but Dell has removed the normal way that I've gone about doing this and I made a previous video about doing it um, using the Life cycle, life cycle service configurator strange name for it but it's the uh, update process that you can go through when you log into the BIOS and go through ftp.dell.com well apparently they have removed the 11th and 12th generation R710s the update files are still out there but uh, it can be a difficult process to update the firmware so I'll show you a way that I was able to go about doing that today let me give you a little background. Uh, I run an R710 as my main Proxmox hypervisor, and I run a Windows 10 virtual machine on there, some uh, Linux virtual machines, an LXC or two to Docker. That's my most recent videos. Um, so we had a snow day today, and uh, so I played hooky from work and was able to take a lot of downtime to work on my machines. I updated the firmware on my NASes. I updated the firmware on my R210. And that kind of led me down this, this rabbit trail of wanting to also update the firmware on my R710. And, um, you know, it turns out that that's not as easy as it used to be because they've shut off the ftp.dell.com and the normal way to do that uh, through that uh, unified server configurator uh, doesn't work any longer. Uh, and there's a couple of different options in there that I'll go through uh, in the uh, UCS or USC, I guess it is, um, that I couldn't get to work either. Now, m maybe some of you can, maybe you can leave me some comments on this if I'm doing it the wrong way, but I did manage to find a way to do it, but it requires that you already run something or can set up an FTP server of your own. Now I run the Zigma NAS operating system. Uh, it's basically it used to be called NAS for free and then they rebranded to Zigma NAS. So I already had uh, FTP settings set up in there and I'll kind of run you through those as well. But let me let me show you real quick what um, the, kind of the steps that I took and what I had to do to, to safely shut things down. I'll just run you through some of those. So here in the browser, uh, I'm showing you, this is the iDRAC, and I'm showing you that my BIOS version for my main uh, PowerEdge R710 here uh, is in fact, you know, 6.5.0. So earlier today, this morning, that was at uh, 6.40, and uh, I knew there was an update out there. I didn't dig into it. I only update you know these servers every once in a while because I don't take too much downtime when it comes to you know my Plex and things like that. That's the the main purpose of the the virtual machine uh, of Windows that's running on this uh, Proxmox hypervisor. So I only get to run updates on the Proxmox hypervisor itself every once in a while as well. So again, the goal was to update the BIOS firmware on the R710, but to do that. Uh, you know, I came over here to my, my Proxmox hypervisor, and the first thing that I did was I went in and, you know, safely shut down all of my different uh, containers and virtual machines. wanted to make sure that I didn't have any data interruptions or, or issues. Um, I've got, you know, some automatic things running inside of that uh, Docker container, and, um, of course, I shut all that down safely to uh, preserve uh, data and information. Same thing with my website. So... I shut all of those down, uh, and then I actually ran the updates for the Proxmox PVE itself. Uh, it's a good time to do it. Everything was coming down, so I'm completely up to date on my uh, hypervisor for Proxmox. Um, um, I think I even took the opportunity to make a backup of, of one of my virtual machines that I didn't have a copy of while I was uh, fooling around with trying to get, um, I think at the time, I was doing the iDRAC Enterprise software itself. I was doing an update on that one, so I, I had some time in between. So with all of that shut down, um, you know, is is where kind of the fun began. I tried my normal ways to go in and, and of course, reboot the server and, and try to go to ftp.dell.com. There's a, a couple of different um, 
you know, downloads.dell.com, uh, ftp1.us.dell.com. There's several different of those FTP sites that I've worked in the past, and I couldn't get any of them to work. So at first I tried going to their website and downloading the individual updates that I wanted and, uh, you know, trying to get those to, to execute and run. And I just couldn't seem to do it. Um, I, you know, that's the, here, let me, let me show you. But when you first boot into your R710, uh, to get into it, it's, uh, instead of the F11 you see there, um, it's F10 gets you into the, the USC system. From there, you're going to want to, uh, and this is what it looks like. I, I, these first few pictures I didn't take, but um, I found them online. So thank you to those folks. Um, so you go to platform update is, is the option that you want. And then you go to launch platform update. And then you're going to get presented with a couple of different options. Uh, one to do it from the FTP server, which is the normal way that I'm used to doing it. Uh, then that other option there is to do a local drive, you know, CD, DVD, USB. Uh, these files are pretty large, so I ended up trying uh, the DVD first. Uh, it wouldn't even do that. I, I tried uh, using a, the SUU as the uh, it's an updater. It runs Linux, uh, and that it, it booted into the system. It did it did boot up, but it didn't find any updates, uh, which was surprising because I again I knew that the firmware uh, for the BIOS needed an update. Um, so then I tried USB and I couldn't get any of it to work. I even created network shares and uh, shared, uh, you know, tried to connect through Samba. I have Samba shares set up through my my uh, NAS machines already and um, could not get any of that to work. So one of the things that I wound up doing was uh, still doing FTP, you know, after doing a little bit of research uh, on the Dell websites, I ran into some of the things that people did. Um, so, but I didn't, I couldn't do it exactly the way that they, they did it. It, it wouldn't work. So um, what I did, I, I went to a virtual machine here of Windows and I downloaded uh, this uh, Dell repository manager program. Uh, it's free, it's still out there. Um, so you can Google the, the, the software. This is a Windows 10 virtual machine again. And um, first thing you got to do, because it comes up blank, is you got to add a repository. Uh, you're going to be pulling from the enterprise server catalog, so that's perfectly fine. What you want to do is custom uh, down here and choose systems. And then uh, when it comes up with line of business, you're going to do power edge, right? And, and this actually isn't just for an R710. That just happened to be the one that I wanted to use. And once you've got your one selected there, you can come down here and scroll and find the device that you want to, you know, pull the, the update files from. Uh, and of course, I picked the R710 because that's what I wanted to do. So I'll cancel out of that one because it's already here. And uh, what you can see here, it's it, the, the total size for all the files is, you know, six and a half gigabytes, but that's three different update options. Uh, you know, one are all the Linux files, one is the Windows uh, 64, x64, and regular 32-bit Windows piece. Um, so what I found is, uh, in, in every single update that's possible for the server, even all the old ones, and, you know, there are some 2012, that's the latest one that from the last time it was updated, all of them are in there. So you can do a specific one if you want to, but I wanted to see, you know, what would what would update on my, my server. Um, so I just selected everything. So one checkbox there, and uh, the first thing you hit is download. Now this, this program isn't very intuitive. Uh, you're going to get a little pop-up here at the bell, and it's going to, you know, give you messages saying that it started the job to download all those files. doesn't give you a progress bar. doesn't give you anything that you know, you would normally expect to see. So what I found is helpful is that you, uh, and, and you're going to select where you want those files to go in, in that um, um, menu when it pops up for download. What I found is, is once you've started it and you see those first pop-up messages, you know, you go in here and you hit clear and you wait for the new pop-up. And that's pretty much the message that's going to tell you that it's done because otherwise you have zero indication that it's doing anything.
And, you know, because that's, uh, you know, for this piece here, 2.84 gigabytes, that's, that's going to take you a bit depending on your internet connection. But once that's done, all of those files are going to be in that folder that you designated. And, uh, but what you don't have, those are all the, the files for running Windows updates, which the Dell servers will accept. But what you don't have is, is a catalog that, that will tell the UCS system what all of those are and display it you know, correctly for you. So what I found when it, when it's done updating, um, you know, select the, the, the windows piece there, or, um, just, just the windows. I, I suppose you could probably do the X 64, but I, I didn't actually try that. Uh, and then you want to hit export. And then what you do here, um, you're, because we're doing this over FTP, I left it at the share. Um, I tried doing the ISO files, and this is what the other guys had recommended in the um, forums for Dell that I had gone to and seen some of the ways that they were going about doing this, and I couldn't get any of that to work. But um, this share piece here, uh, you can browse and tell it where you want to do it, and what it's going to do, it's, 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 you have to have space. This, is, again, is a virtual machine, so I was running out, so I had to move things around. But it's going to copy all of those files uh, you know, from the... the the download that it did before into the new folder but it's also going to put a, a catalog along with it and it's going to put it in a very specific file structure folders uh, nested folders that don't make any sense but it I guess it makes sense to uh, Dell and uh, it creates the catalog file that goes along with it so once you're done with that uh, you, you know hit export and again it's going to pop up with the with the little bell telling you that that process has started clear that out and wait for it to to be done so once it's done I I just happen to put I had already created this folder once it's done this is what it's going to look like it's going to have all of these individual folders in there um, and you know each each one of those updates or several of them are going to be in there and so the one thing that you've got to do to make this really work is rename the XML file the catalog that comes out is actually called R710 um, you know catalog well I, it drove me crazy because the uh, uh, the UCS system there the the server configurator program was not looking for that file and even if I told it specifically that file it still wouldn't accept it but renaming it as you see here to catalog.xml which is really just you know taking you know the front bits off of it it still on the inside is linked to all of these different folders and those updates correctly and that is what the UCS is looking for so that worked uh, now getting your system to do this what I ended up doing and we'll go back here to the browser see here and in case you're wondering it's a Dell repository manager and I downloaded this inside of the virtual machine so do it that way make it easier on yourself um, here in my NAS uh, administrative system uh, I have my FTP enabled um, and the one thing that I ended up having to do because there there is uh, you know when you set this up a place to put a username and a password and your domain if you're using that now I, I do have a username and password set up but it kept failing authentication and it doesn't give you too many logs you don't you don't really know why but I tried with a different program filezilla to connect using that same username and password worked perfectly fine so I don't know exactly what the problem was there but what I ended up doing was unchecking the authenticated users box that I have right there and rebooting FTP which is you know just the save and restart down here at the bottom so if you're using FreeNAS this works almost exactly the same their interfaces I think are a little prettier um, but um, you know Sigma NAS FreeNAS uh, I, I think you could probably even set up uh, some sort of a local FTP share so long as the uh, you know IP addresses and the, the, the firewalls that you have in place will allow the connections I think that could work too. you could probably share it from your machine uh, but this made it easier. I already have this in place. I already have a, a user uh, and group set up for this with the name. Like I said, I've already got a password on there. But I ended up turning that off anyway um, to get it to work. So back here on the pictures. So what you want to do is, is just like we did before, 
you want to pick FTP server. Again, I couldn't get network share to work and I couldn't get, you know, CD, DVD or USB to work. But and here are the start of the pictures that I created. What I did do is I, I put the IP address up there at the top of my NAS machine. Um, and then the share is the first folder that you see there. The four terabyte two is, is a four terabyte drive. That's the second one in the system. It's just my naming convention. Doesn't mean anything. But but you know that's the that's the first share, the hard drive that it's on, and then the folders that it was under. So I had a folder right there uh, at the top of the four terabyte drive uh, called Dell, and then it was repo, repo and SUU, uh, and then turn off proxy. And then um, what's going to happen, because you've disabled that authentication piece, it will connect, and it's going to pop up with this uh, not authenticated correctly error. Do you want to proceed? You hit yes. Uh, and it will pop up with all the available updates and you should be able to go through and you know select the ones that you want and that was a little bit odd in here is the things that I currently have on there uh, are more up-to-date somehow uh, probably based on the installer that I had done the last time than the ones that were are actually in here uh, under this Windows 32 piece I had used a Linux uh, I think in the SUU the last time I did this when I first installed them but uh, as you can see there, well, it's a little, little zoomed in, but um, here, yeah, it's uh, it updated to 6.5.0. So, um, you know, after reboot, it popped up. Uh, there weren't any other major updates that I had to do, but this method of using an FTP server should work for any uh, of the other power edges that use this same method of, of uh, doing updates. So, so long as the files are still made available by Dell, um, you know, for download, we should still be able to get the latest updates. Uh, you know, eventually they'll they'll age out. They'll stop. You know, producing firmware and BIOS updates, security updates for it. But uh, hopefully not for quite some time because I'm getting a lot of a lot of good use out of this system. So um, if this helps, please let me know. Like, subscribe. I'm trying to raise my numbers up. I'm going to be doing a couple more videos here real soon, getting back to the things that I've been doing and uh, um, rolling back into an old subject that I did, uh, thin clients. Uh, so I'm going to do a uh, a, uh, a video about that here soon, telling you. Uh, with all the details it's going to be a fun contest i got a couple of sponsors for that video so um if you got any questions uh on how i set this up if i've missed a step please let me know but uh otherwise um you know like subscribe and uh, have a good day thanks